All righty. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Do I have anyone on here? Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. So leave me a comment if you can view me right now. This is my first time um, doing a live. So I'm trying to figure out how to operate this. Um, let's see. Chat. Okay, there's a chat section. But I hope that everyone's having a wonderful day. Hey, my name is Caroline Roberts, and I just came from the beach with my family literally like two seconds ago. But I'm so excited about our session today once I figure out where the comments and all that stuff is. Um, give me one second. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. I see myself right here. Okay. I'm getting there. Okay, I see you guys saying hi. Okay. Oh, I see. Hi, I see everyone. myself right here. Okay. Okay. Almost got it. I'm getting there. Um, okay, I see you guys saying hi. Okay. That was so sweet. Thank you. Okay, I'm just getting organized on my side and we're gonna get started. This is my first time trying out this Google Hangout thing. It's pretty cool, um, but we're in Florida. I'm so excited because we have our Tampa Riders Retreat happening on Tuesday. Um, so I had to scope out the beach for everyone. But hey, everyone. Hey, Brandy, Janelle, um, Muscle Goddess, Azuma, everybody. I see your comments. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to get started. Okay, I'm seeing all your comments. Brianna, Victoria. Hey, guys. Okay, cool. So um, before we get started with talking about sensitive topics and writing about the past, um, I definitely want to open up in prayer. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I just thank you, Lord God, just for this time um, that we have to come before you. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would be um, in the midst of this webinar, in the midst of our conversation, Lord God. I pray that everything I say is inspired by you and your ways, Lord God. And I just pray for for each person on this live webinar. I pray for the gift of writing inside of them. I pray for the stories and messages that you have placed inside of them, Lord. And I just thank you that um, they will not be afraid and that they will step out in boldness and confidence and speak every single word, Lord God, that you have called them and sent them to speak, Lord. So we just give it to you. We cast our cares upon you, Lord God. We cast our worries and um, we just lift you up today in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Yay. So um, I want to get started, I guess, first. And then you guys forgive me. Like I said, I just got back from the beach. I'm at family's house. So you can see like pictures and stuff in the background. And I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, but I guess first I can get started. For those of you guys who don't know me, um, my name is Caroline Roberts, and I started something called the Writer's Retreat. Um, and basically what I do is I travel, we meeting women around the world, and I just encourage them to birth their books, start their blogs, and just to share their story. So that is what I do. And the purpose and reason for this webinar today is that I come across many writers who have a story to share, um, but they're so afraid to share it for many reasons. Um, they may not know how to get their words across, or they may be afraid of offending other people. They're worried about what people will think when they read their story. And sometimes they're just fearful um, of what's going to happen after they become public, what's going to happen um, 
you know, when they put themselves out there. And I wanted to create, um, I wanted to use this platform just to share some tips for you guys. Today, I'm going to give seven tips of what you can do when you are writing about um, a sensitive topic, when you are writing about your past, um, what you can do in order to, you know, avoid lawsuits for defamation of character, and just so that you can get your message across in the best way possible. Um, do you guys hear me good? I just want to make sure everyone hears me good before I continue. Um, so just let me know in the comment section if everything is okay. All right, so I'm so excited to share this topic with you guys today. Um, so one big thing that I want to talk about that is so important. Okay, yes, you guys can hear me. Good. So, yay! <laughs> one thing that I want to talk about that is so important, um, especially when you are a writer of the nonfiction genre or you're writing um, an autobiography, um, it causes you to go to a place of extreme vulnerability, um, to be able to share your experiences, to be able to share your um, heart and emotions with the world, um, maybe even strangers. A lot of times it can seem very intimidating. Um, but one thing that some people um, rush, you know, to share their story that they don't take the time to do is healing through what actually happened. Um, through they don't even. It's like you have something to share, but your story isn't complete yet, or it isn't crafted. Um, in a message, and I want to talk more about um, the craft of writing and all that stuff later down into um, the webinar. And definitely stay tuned till the end because I have a giveaway that I am going to be giving to everyone who's in attendance. So stay tuned to hear what that is. Um, and I also have a little announcement to, to make. But back to what I was saying, healing is such a crucial and important part of your writing process. And um, a lot of times where the problems rise up is we write about things, not necessarily just write about them. We publish things without going through the healing process. And when you do that, it's way easier to defame someone's character. It's way easier to put someone down because you have that hurt, because you have that bitterness, that resentment, and that unforgiveness. So we have to get to the root of it before we even talk about, you know, the publishing process and, you know, speaking to millions and, and putting our book out there. We have to talk about as writers, what is going on on the inside of us and how is God dealing with us? And what is he, if he's trying to teach us something in the situation, what is it exactly that he's trying to teach us? What can we learn? Because it is from those moments of introspection and just um, really looking deep. It's from those moments that we are able to craft and birth our story. And in turn, someone else who reads your story is going to be able to relate to that and is going to be able to receive something from that. You don't know how your... Um, just your faith to be able to go and trust God to draw you um, through that healing process, um, to allow God to bring you through that journey. You don't know how that can impact or influence someone else's healing. Because a lot of people who are going to be reading your story may or may not have gone through similar things that you have experienced in life. Um, so one of the most important reasons that we write is for other people to feel like they are not alone in their situation. It's for other people to feel like um, they can relate to you and kind of experience life through your shoes. Um, so that's why we do not want to ignore that healing process. And you know, when we start talking about um, defamation of character and all of these different things, a lot of them really could be avoided if we go through the healing process and we embrace, though hard and not easy, but if we embrace that journey of um, forgiveness and 
perspective and put ourselves in, you know, other shoes and kind of see our story from different lenses. Because oftentimes I find as writers, it's easy for us to be um, just just self-centered and write from a self-centered place where everything is just what happened to me. This is what this means. This is my perspective. But it can help bring your writing to another level if you're able to understand how other people might view things, understand um, other perspectives so that you can resonate with more people. Okay, so I have my notes down here, y'all, and welcome everyone who has just joined. I see we have more people who joined. Welcome. We're talking about writing about your past, writing about sensitive topics, and one big topic that we're going to focus on today is how do you write about your past? How do you write about um, sensitive things that include other people? you know, without getting in trouble with the law, without um, bringing someone down or um, shedding someone in a negative light, even though it may have been a negative situation. Um, So that's what we're talking about today. Okay, so so we talked about healing and I wanna talk a a little bit about defamation of character and what exactly that means and what that consists of. So, If you wrote about someone, for example, um, in your book and someone were to bring a lawsuit against you, there would be two different things that they would have to prove in order for it to be, um, you know, perceived as defamation of character. So one of the things that they would have to prove is that the thing that you are saying is not true. So one of the biggest things that... um, make it defamation of character is you telling lies about someone else. Yay, welcome, who joined? So it has to be a lie for it to consist of that and for you to get sued of that. So don't lie. (laughs) Another thing, um, another thing that consists of defamation of character is when you are pulling down someone's reputation or you're causing you know, a group of people or other people to look down on that person or to shun that person. Um, you never wanna bring down someone low and mess up their reputation um, or anything like that. So there are two different parts of defamation of character. It can be considered libel or it can be considered slander. slander. So when we're talking about libel, we're talking about writing or the media, anything that has to do with like a text material in where you are defaming someone's character is considered libel. And then slander is another part of defamation of character. So the best example for slander is like gossip. So that is defamation that is oral and it's coming out of your mouth. So specifically today for this webinar, since we are writers and we're talking about the craft of writing, we are referring specifically to libel when we talk about defamation of character. Thank you, I am the libel. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the two things that um, they have to prove in order for that to count as defamation of character. So I wanna give you guys seven tips because I want this webinar to be really helpful, but I know it's Sunday night and I know that a lot of you guys have work tomorrow. You have, you know, kids to put to bed and all that stuff. So I really just want you to get the most out of it in a short amount of time. So um, one of the things we said is stating lies about someone is definitely um, defamation of their character, especially if they're negative lies that cause people to view them in a negative light. But one thing, one tip in order to help you avoid that is to make sure you just state the facts when you are telling about the story. Just state what actually happened. And when I say facts, I'm not saying to state hearsay or what you think happened or what, you know, so-and-so said that happened. That is gossip. I'm talking about if someone were to bring a case against you, you would have proof that, no, this actually happened to me. 
um, like I can give you proof that this is true. So the fact that you just state the facts from the beginning, if anything were to come against you, at least you would have the proof to back that up. So that's my first tip. So the second tip that I have is when you were talking about a situation, especially when if you're bringing up a certain character, um, as believers, um, for those of you who are not believers here, um, or those of you who are believers, as believers, we should understand, even as normal people, we should understand that nobody is perfect. I can attest that I'm not perfect. There are things in my life that I have done um, that are that have been just horrible that I'm not proud of. And I'm sure that many of you guys can probably relate to the same thing. But there are also things um, that God, that I've done in my life that I can take no credit for, but that would be pleasing unto the Lord. So that just goes to say that everybody has done negative things and everyone has also done some good things. So when you are talking about someone, try your best to find at least one at least one positive or good thing about that person. And then that can help you when you're writing, you know, just about a situation that may have a negative shadow on it. For example, I've read, um, for example, you might write about a situation that happened with your aunt. Um, maybe she wasn't there for you in a time that you needed her. But before you get into even writing about this character, about this situation, um, kind of start off and saying, you know, and you don't have to lie. You don't have to fancy it up if it's not true. But if there's something positive and truthful about that person that you can mention, like, I love this person. Um, you know, I, I respect this person for so-and-so reason. But in this experience, this is what happened. Like writing about my divorce is so tricky. Yeah, even, even okay, speaking to mommy needs a timeout. Um, even with writing about your divorce, you got married because there was something, at least in the beginning, that attracted you, um, you know, to your husband or to your ex-husband. So there has to be something positive or good about that person. Um, so they weren't always just horrible or wasn't always just, you know, a bad situation. There's at least one positive thing. Even if you don't write about it, um, if you have that positive thing in the back of your mind, while you're writing about the situation, it'll help you to craft your story in a better light. Okay, so the third thing that I wanna talk about is changing the name. So how many of you guys, let me know in the comments section, how many of you guys have heard like when people talk about, um, that's like the first thing everyone always says. They're like, just change the name, just change the name. Um, writing about not growing up with my mother and going, Oh, wow. That's really tough. Um, yeah, we a lot of you guys have gone through so many tough things. And that's why I also want to equally emphasize that um, your story is so important. Um, it's so important. While we're talking about like how to perf um, craft it in a way where you're not... Um, you know, bringing someone down or bringing someone low. I don't want you to feel like your voice is not important. I don't want you to feel like, um, you know, you shouldn't be heard or you can't be heard. Like your story and your voice is still so important and people need that. Um, people need to hear what's inside of you to share. Um, okay, so can't change names if I'm writing about parents. Um, especially as Christians. Okay, so getting back to the changing the names. So one of the first things that people say um, when it comes to, you know, writing about the past or sensitive topics is they tell you, okay, just change the name and, you know, you should be good to go. Which changing the name, you know, that's a good place to start. That's definitely something that you can implement. But sometimes changing the name is not enough. <laughs> You got to do more than change the name sometimes because sometimes even when you change the name, it's like obvious because you're including so many other details that identify that person. So for example, if I have a coworker named um, Crystal and I'm writing about a horrible situation 
at work. But I changed Crystal's name to Carol. Um, but I'm still identifying like the location. I'm still saying this girl named Carol at work with the red hair um, who sits next to me. But I just changed the name. She did this and she did that. Um, that's not enough because she can say, she can prove that you are talking about her by saying at this and this time, I worked with her and I have proof that this is, you know, this is where my desk was. I sat right next to her and I have pictures that my hair was red. I know she was talking about me. Then changing her name from Crystal to Carol was not enough. So especially when you change names as well. Okay, I use fake names, for example, Mr. Wrong, Mr. Dearest Love. Oh, I like your fake names, um, V. Um, also, to, to go to piggy off of that, um, how I said um, Carol from Crystal to Carol, when you choose names, try to choose names that aren't common um, because there's a lot of people named Carol who might have red hair who think I'm talking about them even though I don't know them or who might think you're talking about them. So especially like when you change names, don't make it like similar to a name of a celebrity or like just a common name. Um, because people may come out the woodwork, like feeling like you're talking about them, even though you may not even know them. So I think that, um, those are cool names to choose, but also V try to see if there are different details that you need to either omit, um, from the story, um, that are not needed, or if you can change those details, if they're essential, like to be in the story. Okay, so another thing that I wanna talk about, hold on one second, guys. Another thing that I wanna talk about is getting consent, which um, is very important if like your story, like half of your book or like 80% of your book is about like this person. Um, consent is definitely important. Sorry, I'm like reading y'all's comments at the same time as I'm teaching. Okay. Okay, so I'll get back to that, um, to Keisha with your question. Um, if it's a self-help help book, you're trying to show, like if it's a nonfiction book, you're trying to show that um, your story is true it's not fiction, um, so it'll be hard to change the names. But even with nonfiction, there's creative nonfiction. So it's okay to get a little creative and change the names and um, share share things in a poetic form, um, you know, even though it's, you know, your true story and autobiography. But the last thing that I was saying is getting consent in advance is very, very important. In my first book that I ever um, published, it was called Before Saying Yes to the Ring. That was probably <laughs> one of the most intense books in terms of just my experience and just the exposure, especially because it was my first. So in that book, I talked about how I was molested. Um, I just talked about like my childhood, different experiences. Um, I talked about my relationship with my dad and how, you know, I talked about he wasn't there all the time and we weren't that close. Um, but before even publishing that book, you know, I had a conversation with my dad and, you know, he kind of knew in advance the path that I was going in terms of my career, in terms of me, um, having to be very vocal in terms of me as a writer. So because we had a conversation about it, I let him know in advance um, that prepared him for it. I know that for a lot of you, the situation is not going to be that easy. I know it may be even more tricky, especially if it's like an abusive relationship or someone who may not be that understanding. Um, you have to go a different route. But um, because it was my dad, I didn't use a consent form. I know my dad is not going to sue me for sharing, um, my story, but for other people, um, you want to have a consent form in which they're stating that, you know, they're giving you permission 
to write this story, you know, in which they were a participant and they're not going to sue you for it after its publication, but you want to be able to follow up and um, let them see the manuscript before it's published. I mean, I always say, for example, if you have a movie and there's people playing out in the movie, you have characters in the movie, I believe that the actors and the actresses in the movie deserve first row treatment, at least to see it up first um, before everyone else does. But one of the ways that people can be most offended or angry is if 90% of this book that you're making money off of is about them and they had no idea you were doing this and you just put it out there and everyone knows it's about them. It's, you know, messing up their reputation and you didn't even give them like, you know, an advance notice. Okay, I'm reading the comments. Hmm. Okay, so um, Lady in Waiting is saying that she wrote about two relationships with exes, but one was actually on hot news because Okay, so one of her situations was in news. So this is a, I'm very happy you brought that up um, because this is a very good example of something that you can write about. Um, something that was an official court case, like there's documentation, it was in the news. You can write about that because it's proof, like it's true, there's a fact um, for it. Um, so you can definitely write about those things. Okay, so the next thing, that I want to talk about is, okay, I mean, this one is basically like common sense, but name calling, name calling, calling someone's name is obviously like defaming their character. So like in your book, which I doubt any of you guys would do that, but um, this, you know, this guy was a pedophile. He was an idiot. Like, all of these things, like you're literally calling this person out of their name. Um, so that's something that you want to stay away from. And then, um, okay, another thing that I want you guys to um, realize is that one thing, one way that you can talk about your story and get your point across is speaking in general and speaking or referring um, to groups of people because like we just said, the name calling thing, you don't want to say this specific person is this, but if you want to get a, um, a point across, instead of talking about that specific lawyer um, who you had this experience with, you can say, this is what I think about lawyers or lawyers in general, my experience with lawyers have been, so you want to generalize it and group it as a whole so you can get your point across instead of singling out one single person. Or another thing that you can do is just don't use names at all. And that's kind of like the example that V gave, um, VP Inspirations. Um, she uses fake names and then Dearest Love. Those aren't really names anyway, um, but sometimes you don't even have to use names. Sometimes, um, like I'll just say this guy or this person I met once, or um, some stranger. Like, you don't have to make up a name and always try to pinpoint or identify the person. Okay, good, Brandy, yeah. Don't use names at all. If you don't have to, I mean, if it doesn't take away from, from your story, then you don't have to. Hmm. Okay, so um, okay, so V, go on to your question. She said, "Please forgive me for getting personal, but if my cousin um, sexually abused me, may I say a family member sexually abused me? Um, when you were sexually abused, sis, did you tell anyone about it? Um, was there a case done about it? Um, and like, is there proof for it?" And do you think that the person who you're talking about would be able to identify themselves in your story based off of the narrative that you've written? So um, kind of like the context, how much information have you given 
in writing about that. So do you have like the exact neighborhood you guys were in, the street, the house? Um, that may be singling out that person a little too much, um, especially saying family member. So if I were you, I would just, oh, this goes to my last point, actually. One of my points um, is to make your story about you. Sometimes um, we make it about the other person, even though they have a big um, part to play in it, but that can get us in trouble. So we focus on what this person did to us um, instead of sharing this is my experience. This is what happened. This is what I saw. So a lot of times it's safer to um, just share your experience, share what happened to you versus saying, this person did this to me. And another good note is showing us and not exactly telling it. So it may also be a really smart move to give us a narrative of everything that's happening without explicitly saying this person abused me. So if you can write it creatively and take us to that place, give us the details, like um, not specifically like the street address, of course, but um, it might be harder because it's gonna take you back to that place actually. And that's why healing is so important and it's so important that as you're writing you are prayerfully going through this process it can be hard writing and going back to those dark places i know guys um it's really hard but um show us explain what happened um that night or whatever time that was explain how you felt explain you know if i don't want to get too personal and speak it um because i don't want to you know put out any triggers but if you show us, um, you're just really stating the truth of your experience and what happened. You're sharing your truth. Um, so if you can approach it that way, that would be great. Okay, you guys are giving me a lot of questions. Uh, okay, where does a person go to even start writing a book? Girl, you're in the right place. Um, but stay to the end because I'm gonna give you a resource um, to give you more information about writing a book. Um, yeah, so, so if they would be able to identify themselves from reading your story, um, then I would go the creative route so that the reader can really get an experience of, you know, what happened to you and all that stuff without explicitly just stating it. Um, if you're not able to obtain consent with the specific person. Um, yeah, if you are not able to obtain consent, it just makes it a little more hard, but it's still possible to write about that person in your story, but implement all these tips, like everything. Um, maybe say something positive about that person, change it to a completely different name, a completely different, you know, location, state, you know, just switch up the details around it and make sure that um, everything is true and you're not um, making the person seem less than or saying anything that will um, mess up their character. V, I know that you are um, going like you're part of our rewards retreat program. So if you email me, girl, um, we can hash, Actually, okay, stay till the end. <laughs> um, but we can definitely hash that out together because sometimes you just need like a writing coach to like come alongside you so we can like intricately piece that together um, like really carefully. I feel like that's something that, that just has to be carefully written and I don't want to just throw out a broad or general example because your situation is so um, specific and unique to, to your experience. Okay, Okay. so five things to remember. Um, so I'm gonna veer off a little bit. I gave you guys tips on writing this, but I wanna share with you some tips to remember. Um, think sometimes we have to protect our reader. Um, I, don't wanna, I don't know if protect is the right word, but I wanna explain to you guys what I mean. So I'll give two different examples for that. 
So a lot of times when we are talking about kind of like what I was just doing, I didn't want to use specific words that would be a trigger to someone else because I'm thinking of other people who may have experiences that they haven't necessarily healed from. They may not be ready to read what I'm about to write or hear what I'm about to say. It may be too strong. So I'm thinking of how can I write in a way that's discreet to um, just be considerate, be considerate of my reader. So for example, um, I may have a very explicitly sexual experience that happened to me and I want to write about it. But I'm going to try to make it more general. Um, I mean, it's going to be clear what happened. People are going to understand exactly what's going on, but I don't want to get into too much detail, like um, too much graphic detail. I don't want to um, write where it's so graphic to where it's like borderline pornography in my book, um, where it can elicit some very emotional feelings um, for others, unless that is your purpose and goal um, to do that. But just like personally, um, as a Christian writer, I know people may, may be struggling with pornography addiction or maybe trying to overcome masturbation or just may um, be hurt by the sexual abuse that they have experienced. So I may be healed from my situation and I may be able to talk about it freely, but in consideration for my reader, I want to be discreet in that sense. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you guys are finding this helpful. Okay. So um, another example, you know, on the other end that I want to give is a lot of times we have our own opinions, we have our own emotions, and we try to, when we're writing, force it on our reader. Um, so when we're talking about sensitive situations and topics, we don't want to do that. We want to allow our reader to take in all the facts, all the information, um, even to the extent of um, they are walking in our shoes based on how powerful our descriptions are, how powerful our writing is able to bring them to that place. But we never want to tell them how to feel about a character or tell them explicitly, this is how you should feel about this person. This is what this person did to me. This is why this person is so horrible. You are forcing um, your own experiences and you're forcing um, your own perceptions of this person upon your reader. Your reader is um, capable of taking in all the information that they are receiving through your story and drawing their own conclusions of you know what that situation means to them. Um, so allow your reader the freedom to do that. So that's a very important. Um, that's a very important part of it. Okay, so another thing that I wanna talk about is being relevant. Making sure that when you're writing about these things, 100%, yes, thumbs up. Okay, good. When you're writing about these things that it is relevant to your story, right? So if your story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, then Everything that you're writing is moving the plot forward. Everything that you're writing, um, they're seamlessly woven together, and that is the crafting of a story. Um, so little mundane details that don't move the plot forward, little mundane details that you're just adding in there, but they don't serve a purpose, you can omit all of that information. So for example, if your grandma and the fact that you used to go you know, to your grandma's house and have cookies every Saturday with her has nothing to do with the purpose of your story or what your story's about. You know, Just leave your grandma out the story because you're gonna confuse people. Um, so as readers, readers are looking for little hints throughout um, your story because they're trying to understand your story and put all these hints together um, that should lead to an ultimate, you know, um, meaning or underlying theme of what your story is about. So 
if you have um, content within your story or you have just different parts that have nothing to do with your story, they're not essential. Those are things that you can cut out. They will serve as a distraction and they will take away from the power of your story. So you just want to make sure that, um, you know, you cut all those things out. So at this point, we're talking about the editing process, right? But what I tell my writers, when you are writing about um, a sensitive topic or when you're writing about situations from the past, just let it all out in the beginning. Don't go, don't go ahead and think of... Um, lawsuits. Don't go ahead and think of who's going to read this. Don't go ahead and think of what are they going to think about me? What are they going to say about me? Um, am I saying too much yet? All this information that we're talking about now can be implemented later, but right now I want you to just let it all out. All your feelings, all your emotions. You can even like at the very beginning, and this is just for you, this is not to publish. You can even put the name, put it all in there. Let it all out. And then there comes a point when you get to editing where then after you've let it all out, you're going to see, you know, what are the bare bones of your story? What really make up the story? What is essential? And then, you know, you are going to cut off, you're going to trim off all the edges, trim off all the sides. Um, and then you're going to be able to present that work. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to, and let me make sure I'm looking at y'all's comments as well. Oh, um, how do I get that? The rewards retreat. You may need a writing coach. Um, okay, I can talk a, a little bit more about that at the end. Um, and also, if you want me as your writing coach, the writersretreat.com, I have coaching sessions on there. You can book me anytime, any day, um, and we can talk one on one. Okay, but as a writer, I also want you to know your right, especially if you are an American citizen, you have a First Amendment right, you know, freedom of assembly, freedom of religious practice, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. So you have a right to your truth. You have a right to write. Oh, you have a right to write. I like that. Oh, that should be a shirt. You have a right to write. You have a right um, to your story, to your speech. So if you are telling the truth and you're not doing anything to um, you know, defame someone's name and you're just sharing what happened and um, there's nothing that can be proven that you've done wrong, then even if someone takes you to case, you are, it's, even if someone takes you to court, you are protected. You are protected by your first amendment right. So it's very important that you understand your rights um, as a writer, okay? Uh, let me get that shirt when it comes out. Yes, girl. <laughs> Y'all are so awesome. Okay, so I also want to talk about um, disclaimers. So this is another good tip um, that you can also implement. Um, it can be either, it can be come towards the beginning of your book. So you're basically um, putting a disclaimer that is a disclaimer clause that is telling, you know, people that, you know, in this book, you are not, you know, pointing fingers at any specific person, all of that good stuff. So that if anyone, if anything were to happen, just to be safe, you have that disclaimer right there in the, the middle. So what can they say? Right there in the beginning. All righty. We've come to the end, but first I want to see, um, before I make my announcement and share with you guys um, what I'm giving away, um, do y'all have any more questions to ask me? And then I'll share my announcement. And thank you for sticking it out with me, guys. Okay, someone is typing. I will wait. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It says, okay. I don't know if anyone, I don't, I don't know if anyone has a question. Thank you so much. I appreciate your tips. Yay. You guys are so welcome. Okay. So yay. I'm glad you guys love it. Awesome. I'm glad y'all found it helpful. Okay. What resources? Okay. Questions. What resources? So we'll do a brief Q and A and then I will 
do my free giveaway to everyone, and then my announcement. So what resources did you use to help become an author? What did you research? Um, biggest resource experience, I just did it, girl, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I researched everything. I researched um, the publishing industry. I researched about royalties. I researched um, print, print on demand platforms, literally everything. How do you keep writing when you feel like you're struggling, struggling to get your story down in a cohesive way? You see, don't worry about it being cohesive. Just write. The cohesive is later. Silence the editor on the inside of you, girl, and just write and write and write. And then the cohesiveness will make its way down the road. Um, literally, I just write down and then towards the end, I, sometimes I don't even write in order. I write all out of order, guys, and then when it's the editing process, I'm like switching chapters, go here, go here, go there. How do you keep writing when you feel like, okay, I just read that, I got distracted. Please mention what you said about a disclaimer. So basically I was saying you can put a disclaimer at the beginning of your book, letting people know that, you know, none of the, nobody in this book, no character that you mention is to single out, is to defame anyone or anything like that. Okay. Oh, yay, Iantha. So good to hear from you. Love you. Um, where would you place a disclaimer? I would place a disclaimer in the um, beginning of the book. You can do it on your copyright page. Um, or you can, um, I would put it on the copyright page, actually. Um, thank you for sharing. Love it. Thank you. Okay, guys. Awesome questions. Alrighty. So I have a big announcement to make. And then I am going to do my giveaway. And I think that you guys are going to find the giveaway helpful. But for my announcement, guys, I am launching a four part in, oh, there's someone just came in the door. I am launching a four part um, masterclass, basically as an extension of what we talked about today. So in this master class, and it's going to start on the 16th of this month, um, so July 16th, in this masterclass, I'm going to be, we're going to have a peer editing workshop. So literally, whatever piece or part of your story or book that you are struggling with, bring it, bring it, and we are going to break it down, and we're going to make sure that everything that you're saying, that your message and your story is coming across, that you're not defaming everything, that you're good to go. Um, there's going to be so many video lectures. There's going to be so many resources, worksheets. Um, it's going to be so amazing. I'm so excited for it. Um, it's also going to have an editing checklist. So it's going to have a checklist that you can go by to make sure, um, you know, just to check for everything to make sure that you're good to go um, while you're editing your work. We're going to be talking about in this class as well how to self publish or publish your book if you're also interested in that. Um, and my favorite, I love doing our um, publishing boot camps. We're going to have a publishing boot camp and all of that good stuff. So in order to register for this course, and we only have like about a week, registra registration will be open for only about a week. Um, and then it's going to close out on the 15th. So the course is going to start July 16th. But the good thing about it is you can go and take the course as, at your own pace. So you don't have to rush. You'll be able to log in to your back end account at any time go through the coursework, um, all that stuff at your own pace, okay? Um, and the announcement that I want to make that I'm going to be giving away to you guys is I'm going to be emailing everyone who joined here um, examples of a disclaimer clause that you can use to put in the front of your book um, to have that disclaimer. And I'm also going to be giving you guys free templates for um, a consent form, if you want to ask, you know, someone to consent, so that you know, for your book, you know, you can have their consent and all that stuff. I'm going to be giving you guys those resources just so that legally you can be ready. But if you guys are interested in signing up for our 
four part course. If you look at the description box at the bottom of this YouTube video, it is the first link to the master class. So like I said, you guys have a week and literally I'm gonna be working with you side by side. I'm so excited um, to help you guys with publishing your books, starting your blogs and all that good stuff. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm reading your comments now. Um, thank you, love you, Ah, Thank you, thank you, I live in Tampa, Florida. Um, yes. The event in Tampa is sold out. Um, but if you are actually, we have day passes available. So if you are interested, Carla, um, email us. Email me at info at theridersretreat.com. I'm going to type it at the bottom, our email address. Um, yeah, it's going to be so fun. I just came from the beach that we're going to, I'm going to take the girls to, and it was, Beautiful. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. Okay, what else are you guys saying? Thank you. That's so helpful. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Yes, check out the network. Go, Vicky. So, Bud to Bloom on here. Victoria is the vice president of our writing network. Thank you for reminding me and even saying anything about it. So, if you are new and you're just hearing about us, we have a writer's network of 300 plus women on our website at Write VIP dot com join we have a forum you can find an accountability partner get feedback on there as well and i will i will type that as well on here is right vip.com my email is different from my youtube name do you need it are you talking to me um are you talking to me for your email Okay. Okay, guys. I'm there. Yay! For everyone who has signed up to write VIP, also who's there, that's awesome. Man, guys, this was so fun. Um, and I guess it's over now. I need to take a shower. I'm like seawater. But if there are any last questions, you guys can let me know. I love you guys. Um, for the one who's coming, who's interested in Tampa, definitely email me. Um, and I hope to see you guys at our course. Can't wait to see you there. And I am that you ain't on the network, girl. <laughs> Come join the network. <laughs> I love you guys. This was so fun. Okay, I'm gonna do more of these videos. Oh, last thing, subscribe to the YouTube channel that we're on right now, cause I'm gonna be posting more free videos on here all about writing. So if you are not subscribed, hit the subscription button right there, okay? All right, love you guys, until next time, bye.